Hello everybody and welcome back to Shy's Boxes. Today I'm going to be showing you how to deal with your old head unit. This, as you can probably tell, is not an old head unit. This is a Nexus 7. And today I'm going to show you how this is installed and how you can do it really, really cheaply. Well, as cheap as the cost of an X7 and a couple of extra parts. But really, if you have some electronics parts around your house, you should be able to do this with pretty much no extra cost other than the tablet itself. Maybe even not that if you have an extra tablet. It doesn't have to be an X7. I know in the SLK, the Nexus 7 fits absolutely perfectly. Right about here are the dimensions of the Nexus 7, this way and this way. So you can compare, and if you're installing it, if you happen to have an SLK and are installing it in SLK, you can see how it fits. If you're installing it in another car, just measure up and uh, see how it'll fit. Now, obviously, the first things first, how do you get it to stick here? And my solution has just hazards off has just been these which are industrial strength velcro and i just got this at uh, home depot home depot and the other side of the tablet looks very much the same now that keeps you from drilling into the tablet or anything like that and the um you got to get heavy duty if you notice if we come in close, this is not actually just normal Velcro. It's not the fuzzy kind. It's this, like, it feels like plastic. And that's what you want. It's much higher, uh, higher rated, um, and it will keep your tablet from falling down. It also needs pretty high adhesive, because if you actually notice, I can stick my finger pretty far behind here. That's because it's attached up here, and on the side, and on the bottom. But it's not attached here, which is just floating. So, you gotta have pretty good adhesive. Now, as far as this head unit, as you can see, mine was destroyed when I bought the car. If I flip this little thing, up, this is from a first attempt, and I just haven't taken it off because it's a good little pull if I need to remove the head unit. But this right here, this screen, as you can see, is completely destroyed. And even if I turn the thing on, on, yeah, it doesn't change at all because the screen is completely destroyed. So, I decided that I would take off the front plate, which you can do. Um, all you have to do, by the way, to remove one of these is you need uh, two little, they're called radio keys, and you can pick them up on Amazon for about $2. That's probably the only exotic tool you're gonna need for this is those two radio keys, and they're just two little pieces of, um, of metal. But there are some guides online about making them out of pop cans, and don't do that, because you're gonna get it stuck in your radio, and it's just a bad day. So you get two radio keys, you pop them in, and your radio comes out. The next thing that you do is you have to bend with, um, with pliers. You bend up this, you see how it's all crappy? But it doesn't matter, because nobody ever sees it. And you bend all this because as you see, it rests on this plastic thing right here at the top and bottom and on the sides. And that keeps it from being pushed back in. Now we want it to be pushed back in because a lot of these components, like this uh, volume potentiometer here, these are quite, they stick out quite far and they'd make your tablet like out here. And that's not what you want. You want it nice and flat. Another thing that must be addressed is you do cover up these buttons. So, um, you'll want to know where they are, headlight washer, you never use, so why, don't even worry about it. ASR off, sometimes is, I don't know, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, hazards, good to know where they are, and the lock and unlock button. Which I just, if I ever want to, if it's locked, and I want to unlock it, you just pull this and it unlocks and it unlocks the other side in the trunk too so I pretty much never use this button uh, if you have heated seats or tow away alarm that's what those blanks are 
But otherwise, you're not covering up anything super important. But once you've found a place to mount it, and you've pushed your head unit back into the car, because there's always space behind the head unit, you know, you can push it back. What you want to do is you want to go to CVS or you go to Amazon or whatever and purchase one of these MP3 to tape adapters. And don't do what I do, don't purchase a cheap one. But what we're gonna do is I'll pull this stuff out right now, just cause this is, um, I'll hit the eject button. I happen to know which, shut up. And here you are, cassette adapter. And right now I have wired a wire from some old headphones in because the wire that came with it is crap. And this one just looks a little bit nicer. It's black, it's kind of thick, so it, um, you know, it has a little bit of extra bulk to it. And the other thing that you can see that I have here is a cell phone charger. Now this is going to be responsible for keeping your tablet powered and charged. And what you want to do is you want to wire it into constant 12 volt power behind your radio. Now this is pretty easy, just take a multimeter and behind your radio just check on each of the, you can unplug the radio if you want, and you pin in each of the wires. You want to find a ground point, so normally that'll be a black wire, and plug your black probe of the multimeter in there. And your red probe of the multimeter, you can check all the different pins on the radio connector. And one of them is going to be constant 12 volt power. So you're gonna have 12 volt power switched, which is either accessory, which is access, accessory, which is this, ignition, or constant, which is when the car is completely off, key is out, constant power is still gonna be running. Now what you're going to say to me, and what I said when I designed this system was, well, that's going to completely drain my battery, isn't it? And the answer to that is surprisingly no. I have let this car sit for a week without starting it, and the tablet connected, and have not killed the battery on it. So, unless you have a really weak battery, you shouldn't have a problem doing this. You know, you just use one of those cell phone charger blocks, the ones that plug into your your little cigarette lighter. You use one of those blocks and wire it in to the constant 12 volt power here. And what that will do for you is it will allow you to plug your tablet in and that will keep your tablet fully charged all the time. I'll give you some just quick tips and tricks on what you're gonna wanna do um, hardware and software wise to get this working as well as possible. So first off, how do you control the volume? Well, what you're going to want to do is when you set your radio up, you're going to want to turn this little volume potentiometer here up pretty high. You want it high enough so that if the tablet's on full volume and you're on the highway with the top down, you can still hear it. And then all you're gonna do is on your tablet, you're gonna use your volume buttons and that will allow you to set your volume. We'll be going over some software tricks in just a second to show you how to make this a little bit of an easier experience for you while you're driving the car. A couple of quick modifications that I've made to my cassette adapter to make it work a little bit better. As you can see, I've gone in and removed all like the gearing and everything from the inside. And what that does is the gearing makes it so that, um, one, it's noisier because it's moving around all those gears inside. And two, um, if the car has the auto flip function, it lets you, it lets the car know that it's inserted or it's flipped the head the wrong way and it'll flip the head over. Now the problem is that'll sometimes get jammed up and then it like flip, 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 and then the car's like, oh, I don't know what to do, eject. And then, you know, I don't know if you saw, but all this stuff was stuffed in the tape tray. So when it ejects, it just crashes into everything and smashes and, you know, crushes the wires and it hits the tablet and no good. 
So you take your rollers out and it won't have an issue. And basically all you're gonna have then is a little tiny board in here with the reed head that is going into your head unit. So let's take a look at the software on the tablet real quick and just see what we want to do to it to make it a little bit easier to use while you're driving. Since my room's kind of a mess right now, we are in the process of moving. Here we are on the air hockey table. Okay, so if you're like me and you're using the stock Mercedes radio, or in fact any other radio from the 90s, you might find that it's not adequately shielded against Wi-Fi. And what that means is, if you have your Wi-Fi radio on in your tablet, you're gonna get this signal through your speakers and through your stereo. And that's not, if you unplug your headphone jack from here, it's still gonna come through because it's actually being wirelessly beamed into your stereo. And that's no good, that sort of ruins your music. And um, so I'll show you how to turn it off. Obviously, you're gonna wanna go into your Wi-Fi for starters and turn it off, but that's not the only thing that you're gonna wanna do. Because if you just turn Wi-Fi off, you'll find that that sort of fixes the problem, but not entirely. And that's because you have to go into settings. And if you go down into location, location, this is where it is on Android 6. It may be in slightly different location on uh, different Android versions. And if you're not using a Nexus 7, if you're using a Samsung uh, TouchWiz skin or something like that, it might be in a different location. But we're going to go into the triple dots and go into scanning. And what you'll see is Wi-Fi scanning. So it says improve location by allowing system apps and services to detect Wi-Fi networks at any time. What that means is it's allowing the Wi-Fi to be turned on for location purposes, even if Wi-Fi as a toggle is off. So what you gotta do is you gotta turn that off and now your Wi-Fi will be silent. That does give you another issue though. You're going to probably want to tether to this tablet unless you have a mobile network card in it, you're going to want to tether to your tablet so that you can get music downloaded to it and stuff on the go. So how do you go about that? Well, if you have an Android phone, it is relatively easy. You pair your phone and in your phone settings menu, again, this is going to be for Android 6.0. So if you don't have Android 6.0, this may be a little bit different, but you go into more and tethering. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna check this Bluetooth tethering option. Now on some phones, this won't stay checked and that's kind of annoying. And on others, it will stay checked. And I'll offer you, if you want, at the end of this video, there's a little solution that I have which can give you a little button at the bottom of your screen here, my tether on button, which will flip that switch for you so you don't have to go into settings and tethering every single time you wanna flip that switch. But all you have to do is flip that switch and then turn your Bluetooth on and pair your two devices. Once they're paired and that switch is on, you don't have to do anything more on the phone. You can leave the phone in your pocket. And on your device here, you're gonna to wanna to go into Bluetooth and say, here's my phone. And you see you have an internet access option. And if you check that, you're gonna see three little dots or two little dots appear up here on the Bluetooth menu and that will mean that you're connected. So now you have internet access on your tablet. Awesome. Once you have internet access on your tablet, what can you do? Well, you can download a navigation app. If you have Google Maps or Waze, that is as good or better than what you'd buy in a 2016 car. For music, you can use your favorite music player. In this case, mine is Spotify. And if I just open that up, you can see it gives this lovely dual pane view. If you tap here, it gives you player controls and album art. And all you gotta do to go to the next song is swipe. Shh, content ID. Now, if you're having a little bit of trouble with this here, and you find that since the Nexus 7 has its buttons on the back, you find that these are kind of difficult to reach. And also, I don't know if you've noticed, but they are backwards. Like if I have my finger on the left one here, and I push it, 
volume goes up and the volume goes down with the right one. So they are actually backwards, which I got used to, but if you don't see yourself getting used to that or you don't get see yourself getting used to the fact that you have to hit it on the back of the device, you can download this wonderful app by Rubber Big Pepper called Volume Control. And what you do is you give it a size, you select a color, and I've told it overlay status bar, so it goes up there in the top center. And there you go, you have a volume bar. So if you go in and you start playing your favorite song that I can use on YouTube without copyright infringement, you can drag your finger and there you go. This, by the way, is one of my sister's two albums that is out. So, you know, if you enjoy that kind of pop music thing that she sings, you can check it out. Um, it's pretty good in my opinion, but I'm her brother, so I would say that. But Paul, you say, that does not solve the problem where I need to click this button whenever I want it to open up. And I agree with you, which is why I will show you this. This is touch control, and this is a mod for the Nexus 7. It is root needed, so if you have just a stock Nexus 7, this will not work. And if you want to know a little bit more about what rooting is, it's basically if you know jailbreaking on an iPhone, rooting is your Android equivalent. It's very easy to do on a Nexus 7. You just plug it in, you say, unlock please, and it will unlock. There's a little bit more to it, but there are guides on xdadevelopers.com. I will link one in the doobly-doo for the Nexus 7 2013 specifically. But once you have a rooted device with SuperSU installed, that is the app that allows other apps to take advantage of root, you can install this touch control modification. And it has a whole bunch of actions, if you have a look here, that will allow you to, for instance, double tap two fingers to wake, or double tap one finger to wake, or any of the above. So when it's off, you can just tap tap, and it'll wake up. Mine isn't, obviously, because I haven't bothered to root it, but if that's what you want, here's a way to do it. And if you have another device, you can just search up double tap to wake, and you'll find that uh, they make a mod for pretty much every device that will allow you to do that. And as for how much all of this costs to do, you can have a look. Your Nexus 7 is going to cost you probably a hundred dollars if you buy it used on eBay, which I would recommend. Your cassette adapter is going to cost you less than ten dollars, especially if you buy it on Amazon or Alibaba or Fleabay or whatever you want to buy that off of. But that was a piece of crap, so don't buy that. And um, your cell phone charger, and that's really all that you need. You may also need to buy radio keys. It's another two, three dollars, but I'll show you what they look like. Yep, here they are. They're OEM radio removal keys, two dollars thirty-nine cents on the favorite flea bay. But there they are, this one comes with four. You really only need two, but some cars will need four because they have one at each corner. But that's what they look like. Now I know what you're saying, I hear you. I don't want a Nexus 7. I am either cheaper than that, or I have a car with a screen already, and I don't really want to ruin the head unit. Well, this is for you. My God, it's hot in here. This is an FM transmitter and a Bluetooth receiver in one. I got this for about $5 on AliExpress. Uh, they may be a little bit more, maybe up to 10 for a really good one, but apparently you can also stick in an SD card, play songs from there, or a USB drive, or aux in, or aux out. Either way, I guess, I'm not really sure. But all you do is you plug it in, like so, 
you start up your car to connect. and you hear that as much as I'm really hot right now I'm gonna turn that down you hear that lovely Chinese voice that says waiting for device to connect and if you actually bothered to bring your phone in the car with you when you were filming it would connect and you could start playing now you notice I have my radio here tuned into 89.7 FM and this little gadget, you can't even see the screen because it's a really crappy screen, but this gadget is tuned to 89.7 FM. And you obviously, you, you know, you want to do that on a channel that uh, there's very little activity in your area. So you want to, if you unplug it, you want to get as much static as possible. It is ready, waiting for a device to connect. Generally, the transmission quality is not too bad. I find that it's a little bit worse than the tape player method, but for radios like this where they sort of close and you don't want wires hanging everywhere, this is a good alternative to have. And it actually does give you, it gives you a play pause button, a forward and backward button, which point up and down so you have no idea which way they go, and these A and B buttons, which will increase and decrease the volume of this device, which basically increases and decreases transmit power. I always have it on full so that it sounds pretty much the same volume level as if I go to an FM station. Copyright. So there you go. That is a good little gadget, Bluetooth to FM transmitter that you can search for on Alibaba if you don't want to uh, buy a whole Nexus 7 and do that whole setup. You can also hide that little bad boy behind the dashboard of your car, which I did on a previous car. And like I said on the SLK, you can wire it into either constant or switch 12 volt power. And switch 12 volt power is a great option for those little FM transmitters. You don't want them on constant because um, one, you're going to be broadcasting all the time, and I think that sucks a bit of juice. And two, um, it won't reconnect to your phone properly. But if you have it on switched power, it's going to work just fine. It'll connect to your phone really well. And, uh, you know, it'll be a pretty seamless design for you. You won't even notice it's there. Now, another thing to note is if you have a car like the Porsche here, and you actually unlock it, come on, you can do it. There we go. If you have a car like the Porsche here, uh, which is also really hot inside, you can very easily run an aux cable. And this is a great idea if you don't want to um, put a tape player in, you don't want to do the FM thing, and or if your radio does not include the tape player, which this one doesn't. But luckily this one is the I believe it's Becker CDR220. They made this radio for Porsche for quite a while and also Mercedes. The SLKs, the later ones, had this radio and possibly the updated, um, upgraded stereo systems. But these have a port in the back that connects to the CD changer, but that can also be used. You plug in a, uh, an aux cable there's a very specific cable you buy. I think it's about 10 or $20 on eBay. But you plug it into the back, and you go through the settings menu in here, and you turn aux on. I will link a, uh, a guide to that down in the description. And then you will have aux input. And if I go to on here, you'll see that aux is now one of the selectable options in the source menu. And so that is an easy way. Now, if you have this radio and you still want to do the Nexus 7 thing, easy enough, you can push it back into the dashboard, mount your Nexus 7, plug it in here, job done. That's all for today, guys. If you liked this video, be sure to like it and subscribe. And of course, if you have better solutions, if you have other things that I should be installing on my Nexus 7, if you have better solutions for these old cars to get the auxiliary input from your Spotify or whatever into your car, please leave them down below in the comments section. And if they're great, I will feature another video following up on them. Thank you guys very much for watching. See you next time.
Okay, if you stuck around this long, it's probably because you want to know how to automate the whole setup a little more, specifically in regards to the Bluetooth tethering, and since I haven't found a great guide on the internet for getting the whole thing set up as smoothly as I have it, I'll show you here. First thing is that this solution isn't free. The apps used here will cost you a few bucks, and you can look up Google Opinion Rewards if you really don't want to or can't pay for it. The first app is Tasker, a great automation engine for Android, and the second is Secure Settings, a plugin for Tasker that allows it to do quite a bit more. I believe you'll need the pro version of Secure Settings. It's been a while since I did this, but I can't imagine another reason I would have personally bought the pro version, so that's very likely needed. Once you've got both installed, you can go into Secure Settings and make sure you have the actions for BT Connection and BT Tether enabled. Then you can go into Tasker and create a task. Give it a useful name, like Tether On. You'll also want to give it an icon using the grid icon on the bottom right. Inside the task, create an action with the plus button. Your action's going to come from Secure Settings, so click on Plugin, and then choose Secure Settings. At this point, click the little Edit Pencil to choose the Secure Settings action you want to trigger. In this case, on the phone side, you'll want to trigger BT Tether. Have the setting set to On, and you can have it enable Bluetooth for you as well if you wish. Alternatively, on the tablet side, you're going to want to trigger BT Connection. Telling the tablet to connect with your paired phone will automatically start the tethering. Once you've created your tasks, highlight them with a long press and use the triple dot menu in Tasker to click the Export option. From there, you can choose As App, and you're done. Your app will be exported, and it will prompt you to install it. From there, you can add it to your home screen. Very easy setup works quite well in my opinion, and I hope you guys like it. Thanks so much for watching.